What's up everybody, welcome to Risky Bitness. This is my Final Fantasy VII PC modding guide. This is going to be super duper easy and a lot of fun. So as you can see here, I'm just rolling the game just to show you what it looks like natively out of the box with no mods. After we do our modding, I'll show you what that looks like and we'll do a little side by side comparison. Just to keep things really simple, I'm going to use this footage right here. We're going to do the intro cutscene from the part where Aerith appears on screen. And we're going to end it right when the first battle with the soldiers begins. The cutscene, I think, actually looks pretty decent for the most part. You can definitely tell that it was recorded in a lower resolution. But at the same time, if you look really closely, you can definitely see a lot of flaws and the pixels are much larger than they're supposed to be. When we install the mods, we're gonna fix that. So here we have the train pulling in. And I think the most striking thing that you'll notice here are the backgrounds. The backgrounds really look terrible. The 3D objects look fine because they're actually being rendered in real time at a higher resolution, but these backgrounds are just static images. So they're not being rendered in real time. And they're still the original resolution that they were when the game was released in 1998. Also the controls are all messed up here, which is kind of, you know, we get, we'll, we'll, but we'll fix them. So here's our first battle. And again, the backgrounds don't look great, but the characters look okay. And the controls are really throwing me off. There we go. So there you have it. That's what the game looks like with no mods. So let's move on to modding this game. In my last video, I talked a little bit about modding the PlayStation version if you're playing an emulator. So really just an emulator setup guide for that because the game doesn't run very well on emulators. But at the beginning of that video, I recommended that if you are going to play this game on a PC, that you simply play the PC version and use the mods. It's a much better experience overall, especially because the modding has become such an easy process now. It used to be very difficult. It used to take forever. And now it's so fast and easy that anybody could do it. And I strongly encourage you to do it. Your first step, of course, is to purchase the game on Steam. You can use the old version that came out in 1998. However, that is a much more manual process. So that process won't be covered here. If you do have that old version, my suggestion is to just go ahead and purchase it on Steam anyway. It's usually like 10 bucks. So with that out of the way, moving on to the first step, we have to install 7th Heaven. 7th Heaven's been around for a while. It's a mod manager that's been used by the modding community at large for a very long time, and it's massively improved in recent versions. So this is the forum for 7th Heaven, and I'll put this URL in the video description as well so that you have access to all this information here. And this is gonna be really your chief source of information if you have questions or there's anything you're looking to know about it, this is gonna be the place where you're gonna find that information. Now over here, we have seventhheaven.rocks, which is the official homepage of Seventh Heaven. What's really cool about this in particular is that it has a whole demo video and it gives you all the background information, it gives you a donate link this is your headquarters for the mod itself. You just kind of want to go here to the download 7th Heaven. I like to use the setup. I feel that's the easiest way to do it. It will download an executable and that's fine. I trust this source. I've used it before. Of course, you'll select your language here. And then from there, it's just a pretty typical installer. The main thing, I do not recommend that you install this in your program files directory. The reason being that there are some files that will not be written or not be written properly or may not be written properly if you do that. So just bear that in mind. 
I'm going to create a desktop shortcut so I can have quick access to 7th Heaven. Now a couple of words before you go ahead and mod the game. Uh, once you've modded the game, any save files that you have are no longer going to work. And this also disables achievements and cloud saves. So bear in mind that you'll no longer have the cloud saves, you'll no longer have any save files you had up to this point, they will no longer work. So just bear that in mind before you install. Now in this general settings box, it's just going to give you the path where all of the files are supposed to be. It auto detects this for the most part, but if it doesn't, you'll want to click on these little folder icons right here and just make sure it's pointing to your installation directory. That's the easiest way to do that. And then the rest of it, these are all just subfolders under that directory. These shouldn't have to be changed most of the time unless you're doing something very, very custom with the way you have everything set up. Now, I really leave all this stuff alone by default. There's really no reason to do anything else with it. But you do have the option of adding additional catalogs, additional folders, and of course you have a few options here that you can play with and tinker with at your leisure. So I'm just going to save that as it is. Now by default, you shouldn't have anything in the mods list. And we're just going to find the mods the really easy, super, super simple way by going into the catalog. And there's some specific mods that we're going to download here today. I'm going to show you what those are. So for our purposes here, I'm basing this on my favorite mod, Remako or Remako, depending how you want to say it. Unfortunately, that mod has been discontinued, so there's no more new updates for that mod. But luckily, everything that's been done up to this point is still available through 7th Heaven. So we're going to go ahead and enable these four mods here. World Textures, Battle Textures, Field Textures, and Media. And as you browse the catalog, you're going to see a whole lot of mods to choose from. Of course, you can choose whatever mods you would like. This is just my suggestion. So I'm going to try to make things as easy as possible just by searching by QHIM. So we can make it a little bit easier to find everything quickly. We have World Textures. And then click this download button right here. Battle Textures. Field Textures. Click the download button. And Media. And you'll see down here on the bottom, it's going to show you the progress. Now, some of these are going to take a while because they are large. Obviously, any 3D textures, especially high resolution 3D textures, are going to be very large. And we're downloading multiple different mods here. So it's going to take a little bit, a little bit of time. Now, the way that Rimako works is he actually had these upscaled by using AI upscaling. But you have some other options here as well. And we'll go over those in just a moment. All right, so welcome back. We've uh, let those mods download and install. So now I'm going to click on the My Mods tab, and we're going to see what we have installed. By default, these are all turned on. Now, if you're experimenting and if you're going into the catalog and looking through all different kinds of mods, you may have to disable some and enable others. Some are not compatible with each other. You'll have to kind of do your own trial and error with that. But you can do a lot here. You can change the music, you can change the character models, you can change a lot of things. There are full conversions in here. There's a lot that you can do. But for our purposes here, we just want to configure our four mods. So World Textures, we have a few options. I'm going to choose Remako. But as you can see, it's not the only four times, four times up scaling here. So for Battle Textures, again, I'm going to choose Remako. For field textures, once again, Remako, and again, like I said, you can you can choose your own as well. Um, I haven't tried the Satsuki uh, SYW before. That seems to be something a little bit newer. Now, if we look at this one, the media one, we have movies, music, and sound. So I like to do the symphonic remaster of the soundtrack, and I don't like to change the sound, but it's up to you. You have a few different options here. Original soundtrack, band, made professional full selection, so you got some options. Now that we've done that, let's run the game, 
see how it looks. I would also like to see how it sounds, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna add the audio audio properties to it. So you can hear the game too. Now it's really important that you launch it through Seventh Heaven. It may or may not work launching it through Steam. Also bear in mind after doing this, if you try to run if you remove the mods and then try to run the game, it's not gonna work. So the first thing you're going to notice is it's running in a window. We're going to have to fix that. So let's X out for a minute, and I want to show you how we're going to fix that. Now we got our mods installed, now we have to do our configuration. So we go to settings, and then we go to game driver. For the graphics, I like to leave the graphics API on auto unless you have a preference. Choose your desktop resolution here. I'll choose full screen here. I like to have the I like to keep the aspect ratio on native. If you change this, it's gonna stretch everything out, it's gonna look terrible. So don't do it. Leave it on native. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and enable anti-aliasing. I would leave linear filtering off because that tends to cause artifacts and glitches. And vertical sync is usually a good idea to have on just in case you go over 60 frames per second. But if you have mods that make the game go over 60 frames per second, then you don't want to sync. So just something to bear in mind. Alright, so now that we've done that, now let's run the game, and let's see what happens. You'll see it load everything up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and cut here for a second, and we'll come back at that scene that I told you about that we're going to look at. Now, you're probably already noticing that this looks much smoother than before. And that's because the mod has upscaled everything using AI. And I'll put a little side by side for you so you can look we'll have the non-modded on the left and we'll have the mod on the left. You'll really notice a difference when the logo comes up. So for this part, I'm going to pull back the side-by-side -side for a second because I want you to see the whole background. And what a tremendous improvement this mod is. And then let's bring in that side-by-side -side again. So I left the controls alone, but what's cool is that the D-pad normally doesn't work, but you can actually enable the D-pad here, which is fantastic. And you can fix the controls. For the battle, we'll go ahead and uh, put the battle side by side now. Those background textures are massively improved here. Well, I fade them in a little bit. And that's yeah. I mean, that's the basic tutorial right there. There's not that much more to what I like to do with it. I just like to make the game look nice. But there are a lot more choices and a lot more options that you have to mod this game through the So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide, this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe. I have a lot more cool stuff coming down the line. I'll be doing a lot of modding tutorials for PC games, and of course a lot of tutorials for setting up uh, different uh, emulators and uh, functions and features within MetroArch. So keep an eye out for those. And of course, I always like to do my gameplay videos and my Let's Plays, um, which of course, you know, those obviously aren't quite as successful, but I like to do them just for fun. And uh, as far as a return to scripted videos, it's something that I would like to do, but I don't have a hard date yet of where I want to start doing it. But 
but I do have all my old scripted videos available to watch if you like. Please like those as well. And uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Until next time, we will live.